Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Let's delve into XNet to get our Pam's Harvest Craft system working. So I've got all the stuff ready here. First thing I'm going to make is a bunch of machine frames. This is the hard part. This is the part that takes a lot of steel, a lot of redstone, and most importantly, a lot of titanium. I'm just going to go ahead and make six. I don't need all six, but um, I think a lot of the RF tools stuff needs the machine frame. It's kind of the basis for a lot of the bigger stuff, I think, so I'll just make a bunch. I'm sure I'll be making more RF tools things. Put that in the center with a bunch of repeaters and redstone and a couple other things, and you get the controller, which is the brains of the operation. I think I'm going to make two. I don't need to for what I'm doing now, but I'm probably going to want to use this in other places later for other things, so I'll just make two right now. And along with the controller, we need to actually connect stuff to the controller. So we're going to need a bunch of connectors. Some lapis, redstone, gold, and chests. I'm going to need one connector for everything that I want to take items out of or put items into. So for every single mechanical user, it's going to need a connector, which is why I'm going to make like 32 for right now. Because eventually I'm going to need quite a few. And then in between the connectors and the controller go just the simple network cables. Redstone, string, and gold nuggets. I'm just going to make like... Two stacks? Yeah, that should be plenty. Okay, I think that's everything. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot this thing needs power. It's okay though, I think I've got the connectors. I just made some more. That. I've got one, <laughs> one LV wire coil left, but that should be fine. Since I've already run power over here. And at this point we've got 810 bones. All right, so let's let's get rid of this. I don't know how it keeps happening, but for some reason, I keep getting I'm full. What can I get rid of? Sugar. I keep getting tons of core stones on this conveyor belt. Twenty-one. Oh, wait a minute, what? A stack plus 21? Where's all the core stone coming from? I don't get it. I really don't understand how that's all ending up there. It's only extracting from this one, which is just bones. There's core stone right here, but I mean, that's next to it. I, I don't get it. It's very bizarre. I don't really care, though. It's not important. Not an issue. Beautiful bones. Anyway, so let's handle all the network stuff with XNet. I've watched a spotlight video again, so I think I know what I'm doing. Uh, let's put it right here. Yep, looks like the UI that I remember from the video. Let's give it some power. There it goes. Alright, now let's connect it to everything we want it to manage. So let's just start with this. I want a connector there, and a connector here, and I want to just move the bones into it. Ah, right, need a connector here as well. So, oh, uh, you can give it names, too, so let's... Don't need to mess with the direction. That's interesting. That's new. But the version I saw a Spotlight video on was, I think, one of the very, very earlier versions, so I think it's been through some revisions. But let's just call this one... Bones. And I'll call this one... Pulverizer. Alright, so... So, we have Bones, Pulverizer, and then this one is the controller itself. This UI is probably going to look a bit confusing at first, but it's actually not too bad. It's just a little bit weird at first. So there's a channel system. Let's set up something on channel 1. And I'm going to want this channel to manage items. Create the channel. And now let's take 
from the bones drawer. So I'm going to click here, create. All right, so now we're going to be doing something with the bones drawer, right? Right now, this is on insert mode. I don't want to insert into the drawer. I want to take from it. So extract. Now it's set to extract. That's good enough for now. The pulveriser, let's click here, create. And this one is set to insert. Okay, that should be all we need to do to get it to move bones. Now, right now it's full, so let me take this out. And yeah, there you go. So it's moving in bones now. But let me change that a little bit. <laughs> There's more stones. So if we take a look at the extract side, we can set how much we want to take out at a time. So this is how many items we're going to take out every every uh, action, I guess. And this is how often we're going to take an action. Or operation is what it says. So yeah. So this is going to take out a single item every 20 ticks. Ticks are basically the... Um, they're basically the rate at which the server in Minecraft processes things. So 20 ticks is uh, per second. So 20 server updates per second. So this is going to move a single bone out of here every 20 ticks, which is one second. So a single bone every second. That's why it's moving it so slowly. One, two, three. But that's easy enough to change. We can just set it to move a stack every second. So now it's going to fill up practically instantly. All right, so that's solved. Now, I don't want the bone meal to just be inside of here. I want to take it out into a buffer chest. So... Um, I don't know if that's going to work. Can I extract... Right now it's just set to input, to input bones there. I don't think I can extract from the same side that I input. Which means I'm going to want a connection somewhere else. We can't put a connection on the front, so we'll put a connection on the left side. So I'm going to leave a spot here. So right now, if you saw that side is set to red, which I believe is going to allow us to extract what's in the red slot, which is the bone meal. And let's put a connector here. Bone meal chest. So I think I need a new channel for this. Got to make another item channel. Now, oh, for some reason, the pulverizer doesn't have an icon. Uh, but yeah, this is the pulverizer. So from the pulverizer, we're going to extract a stack. And then into the chest, we're going to insert. Yeah, and there we go. Yep, so it's taking it out as soon as it's created. All right, so now we're going to get a nice big buffer of bone meal. Man, I love XNet already. This is so nice. But it can do even fancier stuff than this, without a doubt. Alright, so now it's time to extract from the bone meal chest and put it into all these mechanical users. And it's becoming nighttime. I don't want to go to sleep. I'll just set it to day. <laughs> I don't really feel bad about cheating to set it to day, because what am I really missing? The, the grand experience of moving over there to go sleep in my bed. Oh, boo-hoo. I've lost out so much. Um, I don't need another connector, do I, on the chest? No, I can just reuse this connector. Yeah, so I just need to just run this over here. Okay, so I'm just going to run this into the back of every one of these. Ah, oh, right, they're all going to need connections, of course. Oops. Okay, well, I guess I won't connect them all on camera. I'll just connect one little section just to uh, demonstrate how it works. I'll do the rest off camera. 
Um, I don't think I need to name these, really. I don't think it's too important. What are they called? Yeah, they don't need names. It's fine. Alright, so... I'm going to create a new channel where we extract from the bone meal chest. Create a new item channel. And this is the button to toggle it on and off. I'm going to just turn it off for now while I'm messing with the settings. So from the bone meal chest, we're going to extract. And here's where I want to mess around with these settings a little bit more. I actually don't want it to extract extremely fast. Remember, the idea here is that the bone meal gets evenly distributed to all the mechanical users. So I don't want to just like move a stack to each one and keep them full or something like that. I think I just want to keep maybe, maybe just one bone meal actually in each one. So every 20 ticks, every one second, I'm going to move a single piece of bone meal. And something really cool that you can do is you can tell the amount and destination inventory to keep. So we will only move in bone meal so long as the amount of items in the what you're transferring into is below this amount. So if I say I want to keep one, it'll only try to move in bone meal if there is not already a bone meal. So it's not going to try to cram each one full. It's only going to try to keep one in each one. Right, so from there we extract. And then for all of these, we're going to insert. And we shouldn't need to change anything. So let's just turn it on. And that should do it. They should all now be full of one bone meal. Um... <laughs> okay. Something's not quite right. Let's turn that off again. Does it need to be on the insert side to keep in one? Huh. Let me let me try it on the insert side. I thought it worked from either side. Let me turn it back on. Now it shouldn't be moving any bone meal. And if I take this out, it should move one. Yeah, okay, so that's doing what we want it to do. Oh, all the others. That's strange. All the others are only filled up with one. It was only this one that kept getting more. Huh. Bizarre. No idea why, but anyway, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it, huh? Because I don't want to make, I don't want the Pam's Harvestcraft stuff to be made extremely fastly. Fastly? I don't think that's a word. Um, but right now it's basically roughly going to use a bone meal every second, because it's going to refill one bone meal every 20 ticks, which is one second. That should be fast enough. That's going to be probably a Pam's Harvest Craft harvested every roughly two or three seconds. That's plenty. I don't need like 4,000 soybeans in a couple minutes. It's fine. Alright, so let me plan a couple things and watch this thing work. Okay, that should do it once I set it to, what is it, use item on block? No. Activate block with item? Oh, oh! these mechanical users take power. And it's nighttime, so the solar panels are not working. That should do it. Use item on block. There we go. Yes, there you go. Roughly every second, it's getting a bone meal. Bone meal, use. Bone meal, use. Bone meal, use. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so just for the sake of not getting a million of that one fruit and nothing else, I'm just going to turn off that channel. And set up the rest of the stuff. Yeah, just for just in that amount of time, I got 43 raspberries. Beautiful. I've also got to make a ranged collector to go here. Alright, I went ahead and tripled it. And now I've already planted every single Pam's Harvest Craft that we had. It really doesn't look like much when you only have... One plant of each type planted, huh? 
But yeah, with the tripled size, we have enough room for quite a bit more. Pam's Harvest Craft and even other stuff. I mean, it doesn't have to be Pam's Harvest Craft necessarily. I've got some vanilla Minecraft stuff planted here as well, just like grass. And rice, which is from Actually Additions. I think that should behave the same way as Pam's Harvest Craft. Right-click should harvest it. And I configured every single one of these to do the activate block with item. And all that good stuff. Got the three collectors. So that's pretty much ready. But before I really kind of flip the on switch, I do want to handle the items. Because these are just getting completely clogged up. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is probably make a storage drawer for each plant. I think we'll only need one storage drawer per plant. I'm pretty sure. For Pam's Harvest Craft, definitely the answer is yes. The only question is for some other stuff, I don't know if they could possibly drop multiple things. Like rice, for example, I think... Yeah, actually, I think rice will drop rice and rice seeds. So there might be some exceptions, but for the most part, we're going to need one drawer per thing. And I think I'm going to go for a system where it tries to insert everything with a high priority into the drawers, and then if it can't go into the drawers, what it's next going to try is just putting it into a trash can. Because this thing is going to suck up some random stuff, like when mobs die, for example, or when I'm doing some some remodeling of the... <laughs> remodeling of the earth. It's gonna get sand in it and stuff like that. So I don't want these things to clog up and just break every time that something odd shows up in them. So instead I'd rather have it automatically throw stuff in the trash that doesn't fit into a drawer. So yeah, let me get the drawer set up. Alright, I think I've got everything pretty much set up. So everything's connected. I just finished configuring all the mechanical users, just the same way as before, where this one extracts from the bone meal chest and then all of these insert. Got a lot of them. Uh, but I also put down the all the drawers, 32 of them, which should be enough for every single thing that's gonna come out of here at the moment until we add more plants. And I added a storage controller. Um, if I didn't add a storage controller, then I would need to use a connector for every single drawer and that would be a mess. And I've also got a trash can for throwing away stuff. And I also hooked up each one of these ranged collectors. Now I haven't quite configured everything. I did configure all these mechanical users, but I wanted to show you the configuration that I'm going to do for the items going into the storage, into the drawer controller and the trash. So let's set up a new item channel. Channel 4. So we want to extract from all the collectors. So from each one of these, we want to extract and take a stack. We just want to go as fast as possible. Extract, stack, extract, stack. Okay. Uh, also, I want to mention that for this one, for the bone meal, I set it to round robin instead of priority. By default, priority on everything is just zero. It's all the same priority. Um, so round robin, I think, should guarantee that everything is pretty evenly distributed. Which I don't think is going to matter when we have more bone meal than we need, but I'm imagining a situation where, let's say, we only have, I don't know, 10 bone meal left. If it's not set on round robin, then I'm thinking it might continually try to give the same little bits of bone meal to maybe like the first connection in the line or something rather than evenly distributing it amongst everything. So in case we run low on bone meal, hopefully round robin will make it a little bit more even. Uh, but for this one, I don't want it to be round robin, I want it to be priority. And the reason for that is because I want to have a higher priority to insert into the drawer controller than the trash. I want to insert into the drawer controller first. Here's the drawer controller. So insert into that, let's say priority 100. And then if it can't insert into that, insert into the trash can with priority, yeah, zero. That's fine. Okay. Oh, the channel was enabled the whole time. I guess that means stuff's probably already inserted. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 
<laughs> okay, so some of this is going to be garbage because it's stuff that was just in there like that. Should not be in there. I think that's it. Yeah, that was the only piece of garbage. So yeah, if we drop something, boop. <laughs> Shows up over there. <laughs> Okay, are you ready? When I flip the on switch, this thing is going to just... It's gonna go for it. Here we go. Once I flip this on, the bone meal will start flowing. Boop. Alright, I set them all to use item on block, and I'm also going to try setting the extract side to stack. Maybe that, maybe it wasn't sending it quite fast enough, because this was on single, and all these were on keep one. So I'm not quite sure what that's going to do. Hopefully it's going to extract a stack. Try to extract a stack, and then distribute it to each one of these, which can only have one, rather than like insert a stack into one of them. I'm not really sure how it works with you know, having different amounts here. This is a stack, and this is keep one on the insert and, and uh, extract side. I'm not really sure how it handles that, but let's see if this works. Whoa, okay. I think it's working. Let's just make sure it doesn't have more than... <laughs> yeah, it's just keeping one in each one. Oh my god, look at that. That is gorgeous. <laughs> Oh wait, did I forget to set these? Oh, I forgot to set this side. Use item on block. Oh, I forgot this whole side too. Oh, it's gonna get even more fun. Now look at this. Now that is a party. That is just so beautiful. All right, let's take a look at how the collectors, okay, the collector cannot keep up. That's, that's too fast. Freeze! Freeze, freeze, freeze. Way, way, way too fast. Hmm, why don't we have everything filled up here? Does it just need more time to collect stuff? No, it's already processed at all. That's strange, because I have 32 drawers, and I'm pretty sure there were 32 varieties of stuff, which means there should be 32 things over there. That makes me think we might be accidentally deleting stuff that we don't want to. One, two, well, I mean, uh, this is five on each side, so each one of these is 10, right? So that's 10 types, 20 types, 30 types, 31. Yeah, 31, that is not filling up 31 drawers. Hmm. Let me, for diagnostic purposes, let me replace this with a chest so we can see what's going in here. It's gonna have the same name, right? Yeah, it should, it should still be configured the same way. Okay, before I turn this on, since it was getting overloaded and going too fast, I'm gonna change this. Instead of basically inserting every one second, Let's do it every three seconds. 60 ticks, which is three seconds. Yeah, much, much more reasonable speed. Yeah, we are getting things going into here that should not be. So I was deleting a bunch of stuff. Why? Oh! Oh, 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 I think I know what it is. I think the drawer controller isn't able to reach the other drawers. There is a range limit to the drawer controller. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. Okay, it's probably limited to a uh, twelve by twelve radius, so it can't actually reach these drawers. Okay. Well, that's an easy fix. Let me just relocate it more towards the middle. All right. Let's try it out now. I still have the chest here to just absolutely make sure I'm not throwing away stuff that I want. 
Let's re-enable it again. I really do love how that looks. So this should fill up very quickly. It is. I believe it should fill up to the very end, I think. Assuming rice does have two products as I believe it does. This is rice seeds, and there's the rice. Yep. So again, this should fill up all the way if I've done everything correctly. I'm suspicious. Why are there two slots? Aha! I found the problem. Nothing was misconfigured. It just turns out that I accidentally double planted two plants. So I didn't have as many varieties as I thought. So I just removed two of the drawers. Yeah, but this thing is still totally empty. Let me just turn this back on. Turn it off momentarily. So what we should see... I'm so confident I'm going to throw my glider. If I throw my glider, it should end up by the chest. And it does. Okay. So it is safe to replace this with the actual trash can. Actually... You know what? That's not a good idea, actually. I actually should leave it as a chest. Because very, very little is going to go into here. It's just stuff that I maybe accidentally drop or, you know, sand. If I decide to take some sand away, this might get picked up, as it just did. But what if I did accidentally drop this? Like, what if I accidentally dropped my backpack and then it just goes in the trash and instantly gets deleted? That'd be a catastrophe. So I'm actually just going to leave this as a, as a chest. That's way safer. Way, way safer. So let's look at how much stuff we got already. Looks like for most stuff we have a hundred or more. No, not for rice seeds, but that's not important. The rice is what we want. Some, stu some stuff we curiously don't have that much of. But most stuff we have a lot of. So this is incredibly effective, and of course I could speed it up if I wanted to. Right now it's just one bone meal every three seconds. Oh man, and even with that, this is getting kind of pretty filled up. This one's good. This one's having trouble. Yeah, um, if I wanted to, I could upgrade this connector here. So this is just a basic connector, a normal connector. But there is an advanced connector, which, among other things, it allows you to set the tick rate to uh, basically transfer a stack every 10 ticks instead of 20. So it'd basically be twice as fast. It would do it twice a second instead of once a second. I still can't get over how beautiful this is. Stuff just... just <laughs> the plants just explode with bountiful goodness and then puff into the air. Alright, so let's see how our bones are doing. It looks like we're slowly using up more bone meal than we're making. Yeah, we're definitely using up more bone meal than we're making. How's our bone supply doing? We're down to 266. 265. Yeah, so this is steadily going to go down at the current rate. I'm actually going to set this even slower for now. Or maybe I'll just turn it off. I mean, it's not like I really need a super large amount of this stuff at the moment. Just for now, I'm going to turn this off. So this is working fantastic. I'm super happy with this. But now I need to think about what am I going to do? What, what the hell? How did that get there? Is that too far away to get picked up? It won't get picked up there? Hmm. A little bit annoying. Because I thought things, these things had a range of six, but maybe the fact that it's a tile up is making it a little bit weird. I could move this connection here. Move it out one so that anything that falls will be on the ground instead of up a block. But I don't think it's that important. It's not going to fly out in this direction all the time. It'll be fine. Anyway, what was I saying? Yes, I need to think of how am I going to handle when everything's full. This stuff's going to fill up pretty fast, and I don't want to... I, I really would prefer not to give this stuff void upgrades. Although, maybe I should. Uh, let me think of how I want to handle this thing kind of overproducing. 
All right, so what I'm thinking for being able to deal with overproduction is a very, very cool way to manually shut it off. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Not some fancy, super smart way, but a very cool way that I've never tried before and I've really looked forward to using this mod. So I've used industrial wires before. I used it and continue to use it for the, uh, the immersive engineering style EU wires. But it does more than just that. It also offers something called a control panel. Never used it before. I've barely seen it in a video and it wasn't even a spotlight so it didn't really explain how it worked. I have no idea what I'm doing. But the basic idea is you can make a control panel and you can put all sorts of switches on it. Switches that are much smaller than an entire block space. So you can make a, you know, a fairly tidy control panel I believe. With many small connections, many small buttons and have a control a bunch of different redstone signals outside of the control panel. So look at all these different buttons. They just sound cool. I hope they have satisfying noises when you mess with them. But there's a lighted button, there's label, there's indicator light, slider, toggle switch, which is what I'm going to use. I hope it makes a satisfying click when you toggle it on and off. And I'm imagining each toggle switch will toggle redstone on and off for each mechanical user. So I can individually control certain things. Because I don't want to... Uh, you know, what if I run out of one thing, but I don't run out of anything else? I don't want to just turn everything off because everything is full except one thing that I really need. So to get fine-grained control, I think I want the ability to turn on and off exactly what I want. So let's try this out. Again, I have no idea how this works. I'm uh, going to make the control panel a creator. I assume that's like the workbench of the mod. Some steel rods. Iron drill head, advanced alloy. Advanced alloy I think I got as a quest reward a while ago. Iron drill head, just iron. Literally just iron. Electric motor. Just some tin item casing, iron, coil, copper. Just some metal, basically. Nothing complex. And then panel connectors. I don't even really know what this stuff is for, to be honest. Basic machine casing and redstone. And for a redstone wire controller, a panel connector plus a redstone wire connector. So uh, this mod makes use of the redstone wire connectors from Immersive Engineering. So I'll finally have a use for those. And I think that this is what's needed to get the redstone signals out of the control panel, out into kind of the real world, basically, more or less. And I'm going to make a bunch of toggle switches, a bunch of copper wire, levers, and iron rods. There's an entire iron rod on each toggle switch. Those must be big toggle switches. Anyway, let's go test this out. Actually, I might as well just test it out here. Yeah, why not? Again, I have no idea how this works. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um... So this is, move all components, snap new components to the grid, create a new control panel, disassemble the panel, well there is no panel yet. Okay, so this is me placing the toggle switches. Yeah, let's snap everything to a 16 by 16 grid, that sounds good. Does this go in here? No, this is separate. How does this work, though? Does it save it? Yeah, so it saves whatever you put in there. Can I just create a new control panel? No, I, I don't get it. Something's supposed to go in here. Oh, it uses a basic machine casing to go here. Okay. Alright. Okay, so let's just try this out. Let's just try something really simple. Let's just say there's, like, one switch. Oh, it's not snapped anymore, is it? There we go. There's one switch kind of in the center. Uh, that's it. Create a new control panel. Done. <laughs> okay. Cool. Now let's see if I can get this thing to actually do something. <laughs> that's the saddest looking control panel. <laughs> It doesn't even make a noise. Oh, man. 
actually don't like that. I was hoping it would make a noise. I was hoping there'd be some sort of an indicator that it's on or off. Like, I'm not even sure which way's on and which way's off now. I might want a different type of button. I think you can get a lighted button that will probably light up when it's on. Yeah, I might go for that. Uh, but anyway, let's just see if I can actually get this thing to work. So... Did I just put it next to it? Maybe? Hold on, I think you can... Can you configure these? The ID of the redstone wire controller to output a signal to... Yes. And you can change the color. Okay. So yeah, you can change the color of redstone wire connectors. Basically sort of a, a channel system. So right now it's just broadcasting on white, which is the default. And it's broadcasting to the default redstone wire controller, which this one is set to. So it should be broadcasting to it, although we can't exactly tell. Theoretically, I can use this now. I'm going to test it on glowstone. So I believe when glowstone receives a signal, it a redstone signal, it should turn off. Let me just confirm that by putting this on there. Um, I can't put it on it directly. Eh, whatever. Let's just try this and see if it works. So, connected... Uh, that's on output right now, so I need to set that to input. The immersive engineering hammer. Yeah, so it's on white, which is what we want, and it's inputting a signal. Oh wait, maybe input's what I want. Yeah, input is what I want. Never mind. Alright, that appears to do nothing. I don't know if glowstone works the way I want it to. Well, let me get something else. Okay, this could not possibly be more clear. So this is one of the inverted white lanterns from inside the cat house. Very obvious when that's on and off. So, let's try this one. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. It does not work. Try flipping it. Oh, so it needs to be set to output. So output means it... It's weird. Output means that it outputs a redstone signal. I don't know why I find that weirdly counterintuitive. I guess it isn't counterintuitive. That actually makes sense. That's consistent with orange and all the other immersive engineering stuff, meaning it, you know, fluid goes out, items go out, energy goes out, orange means redstone goes out. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Okay, so that works. That's fantastic. Let's try a new type of button that might look better. All right, let's try the lighted buttons. I feel pretty confident about this, so I'm going to make 35 of them. Hope I don't regret it. Once again, they can... Ah, oh, you can set the color of the redstone channel to output to signal to, and also the color of the light itself. Right now it's red. Ah. Right, uh, I remember reading the... So, the Industrial Wires mod adds a little section to the Engineer's Manual from Immersive Engineering. I was reading a little bit in here. It's kind of confusing, but it did describe that there's two different modes for this, latching and non-latching. So non-latching will leave the button on for, I think, like half a second if you press it, and then it turns off. And this one is just... If it turns on, it stays on until you turn it off, which is what I want. So it looks like I've set that for the whole stack of 35, which is good. Uh, you know, actually, let's make this blue. Oh cool, it actually changes how it looks, too. Like the item itself. Neat. Alright, so let's see how this works. Put that in there. Remove all... Disassemble. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so that's what I had heard. It uh, actually consumes the machine casing. So I've only got two more. I better get this right. Let's 
snap it. Yeah. All right. Let's try it. Boop. <laughs> and it works. It's not as good as I wanted it to look, though. You can't really... I wish it was brighter. Still, though, it is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Is there any other button type that might look cooler, though? Lighted button... Label isn't a button, it's just, well, a label. Slider. So there's some things that give you varying signal strength. Stuff like the slider and the variac. This one's, well, a slider. This one's like a knob. I don't need variable power, though. Toggle switch. There's a covered toggle switch. No, I guess that's pretty much it. Could go with the covered toggle switch, but... I think this would be the best. Okay. So one more thing to look at. I'm going to need a lot of buttons, right? Um, at the moment I have, what, 30? At the moment I have 30 different plants, right? Or 29, something like that. So I can have each one output on a different color. But this there's only 16 different colors. Which means I'm actually going to need to use all the colors on one redstone wire controller. And then make another redstone wire controller and change the ID of the redstone wire controller to output to a whole new one. Okay, I think I've got this set up for the first line. So, <laughs> it's really, really, really ugly. Um, yeah, the control panels definitely seem very much work in progress. This definitely looks like developer art, programmer art. But the idea is really cool, and if it does work, which it should, I'm going to be super happy. So I've got the control panel here. I laid out the buttons to represent every single mechanical user, just as they appear here. So if I've mapped these correctly, God, I hope I have, this button should represent that mechanical user, and so on. So it should be pretty easy to see which one I need to enable and disable if I want to mess with them. And because and because each redstone wire controller can only do 16 different colors, meaning 16 distinct connections, I ended up needing four of them. So I just put some panel connectors down here so I could put these redstone wire controllers up here. I just wanted them up off the floor. Maybe I should have put them on the floor. I don't know. I still could. It's super easy to move them because it kind of blocks the view a little bit. But anyway, so this is the first one, ID 0. It connects to the first connector. And then uh, at first I was thinking about it like a power relay. I, I thought I'd have to connect every single one of these connectors to this one. But no, this one connects here and then they just all chain together. Because they're all actually rece receiving a redstone signal, but only on certain colors. So most of these are going to ignore it. Like, for example, this one. You can see it's orange and it also says channel orange. So only if the redstone connection is outputting on the orange channel is it going to react. The rest of them, I guess, will technically receive the channel, but just ignore it, I guess you could say. So I've got the first 16 set up here, all the way to the color black. And if I've mapped these correctly, I should be able to turn them on. So I set all the mechanical users to redstone on, meaning they'll only turn on when they receive a redstone signal. And I turned on the uh, controller up there to distribute the bone meal. So they all have bone meal. They're ready to go. They're just not going because they're not receiving a redstone signal. So let's test this. I'm going to turn on this one right here. So I should start making the rhubarb. If I've mapped these correctly. And if I haven't, I'm going to rage quit or something. So, boop. Huh. Uh oh That's not good. Have I messed up the mapping? Let me just turn on a bunch of these. Is anything going to turn on? Uh, 
Literally nothing's turning on. Wait, are they set to the wrong mode? They're set to the wrong mode. There's oh, okay. Thank God they're set to the wrong mode. Oh, okay. So let me switch this. And look at that. It seems to be working. Okay. Let me turn all these off, switch them to the correct mode, and see if it is all working. Okay. Now they're all set to output. And as you can see, none of them are currently receiving a redstone signal. So let's try that again. Let's just enable that right one. Should be every three seconds it gets a new bone meal. Yep, definitely working. Let's turn on this one and that one. Oh my god, it's working. <laughs> it actually works. <gasps> okay, so I just got to hook up the rest now. I do believe I am done. And <laughs> what a beautiful sight it is. Yeah, it's pretty messy, but it had to be, unfortunately. It's fine. It just looks really cool. A mess of redstone wires and network cables. I love it. So I ended up doing this. I made some more panel connectors. And, well, by made some more panel connectors, I mean I cheated them in. Because, I mean, honestly, why? Why bother? Why bother making them? They're ridiculously expensive. I needed more. They're hideous. They cost a basic machine casing for each eight. I mean, it's not like basic machine casing is that hard, but just to put down some ugly, ugly, ugly blocks to make a little tower of it. I don't know. I didn't want to bother. Sorry if that bothers you, but just didn't feel like it for that thing. So it's ugly, but um, pretty necessary because I was running into the issue where I couldn't connect to some of the ones in the back because the connection was occluded, something was in the way. So I just put them up on the tower so that they could connect to even stuff in the back. And yeah, everything should be configured. Now some of these I can't test because there's nothing planted there. These ones over here. Can't be sure that they're all configured correctly, but I'm pretty confident that they are. Let's test the very last one. Let's test these beans. Boop. Look at the beans go. Uh, wait a minute. Are the mushrooms going too? Why are two things going? Oh, there's nothing actually wrong with my connections. That's just how they all behave. I didn't quite realize that. Interesting. Um, I guess that's fine. It's a little bit weird. I guess it means I could have used like half the buttons. <laughs> um, I think the reason is most likely because of mechanical users. Perhaps they respond to redstone like... Perhaps when this block gets a redstone signal, which is the one I have enabled right now, maybe it's close enough to the other mechanical user that it it receives a redstone signal too for some reason. I don't know why it would. I thought that was one of the advantages of the redstone wire connectors, is that it's not just like redstone on the ground, but a direct connection into a specific block. So I figured it would be isolated to that block. But, yep, yeah, seems to have enabled the one next to it. That's fine, not a big deal. Yeah, so it works. Let's go flip all the switches. And by flip, I mean silently press them to make them slightly brighter. Boop, 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 boop. And then the middle row. And they should all be on. And they are. That is so cool. Actually, I can turn off this whole row. There's, there's nothing in that one. Also, nothing in this one. This is one of the coolest things I've ever made. I'm so proud of this. So let's check how our stuff's doing. Oh. Killed a zombie here.
Yep, bones are definitely still going down. Got maybe 200 of everything, roughly. Hundred ninety nine soybeans. Let's go take a bunch of those and start pressing them. I just can't get over how cool this is. I wish the control panel looked better and felt better to use, but the functionality is there. I'm, I'm still super proud of it. And it's still really cool. I really wish I could change these blocks, though. They are the most hideous things. Christ. Oh, well. Yeah, so we're really well set up to just make tons of stuff. Make anything I want, with the only limit being the bone meal. And if I needed more bones, I could just go expand the mob farm. Because right now, the limit is the bone supply. With enough supply, the limit would probably be the pulverizer. It probably wouldn't be fast enough. But I could always upgrade that pulverizer as well. I'm sorry, I know I'm just staring at this working. But it's really cool. Yeah, the collectors definitely are having some trouble keeping up, but I don't think they're actually filling up, so I think it's okay. And... One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm guessing... I'm guessing if this one fills up and can't take any more, this one probably could take some of the spillover. Because I think a lot of this is in range of this one. And this one too. So even if this one does fill up, I think it's okay. Pretty sure this one will take some of it. Alright, well, I think this is a good place to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm not sure everything I'm going to do, but I do know that I want to set up this farm to output all this stuff automatically so it stops stalling. Get that sorted into some drawers, and I think... I think I also want to go exploring for more Pam's Harvest Craft gardens to get more of the varieties of stuff. Because there's a lot of unplanted area here, and there's a lot more Pam's Harvest Craft stuff that we have not gotten. Multiple kinds of gardens that I've just not even seen. So, gonna do some exploring, get some new crops, and I'll be back soon.